Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. I'm an archaeologist with an interest in experimentally reconstructing aspects of life in the past, and that includes things like perfumes and cosmetics. I'm really pleased to present this short video for Wakefield Museum and Castles, inspired by Roman Castleford, which the Romans knew as Legentium. I'm going to show you how to make your own rose oil. At this time of year, the roses are absolutely beautiful. Now, the Romans adored roses. If you look at the wall paintings in places like Pompeii, you see roses everywhere. And it's likely that everywhere that the Romans settled, their love of roses went with them. Now, I'm going to have a go at a recipe today that's broadly inspired by the Roman tastes for perfumes. They actually had some extremely complicated perfumes that took a long time to make, used 20 odd ingredients. But they also had some that were very, very simple. So today, we're going to make an infused rose oil. Now it doesn't matter for this recipe whether you use pink roses, red roses, white roses, even a few of the little wild roses, as long as they've got a really nice scent. That's what's important for this. They've got to be a really, really nice, fragrant rose. So sniff your roses and enjoy choosing the ones that smell the nicest. You're going to need enough petals to pretty much fill a jam jar. So all you're going to need is a jam jar, some roses and some olive oil, although if you've got other sorts of oil that work for your skin, that's fine. Just make sure it's all skin safe, no matter what you use. All you need to do is pick off the petals and pop them into your jar. You don't really want this bit in the bottom, but don't worry too much if little bits get in. Watch out for green fly. Don't really want those in our perfume. Now, in a really classic Roman perfume, they would have started by preparing the oil. So they would have soaked it in things like sweet flag root or other types of rush. That preparation to start with helps prepare the oil to take other scents. And the Romans are very clever with their perfumes. They actually say that if you make a perfume all with one flavour of plant, and then right at the end you add a tiny bit of another ingredient, a little smell of that last ingredient, they understand how perfumes layer. We want to keep this simple, we want to keep it safe. We're just using roses today. If you haven't got roses, you could use something like mint again, as long as it's safe to use on the skin. Once your jar is full of your lovely scented petals, you're going to get your olive oil and you're going to top it up. So fill it up completely. And then you're going to put the lid on and put it in the sun for two or three days. Here's one I made earlier. You'll see that it all melts down a bit. And when you've given it a shake, all those lovely rosy smells will have gone into the oil. What we need to do at this point is to strain it and then we're going to use the oil that comes out of this to top up our fresh jar of roses. So you start with fresh oil, once they've stewed for a few days you're going to squeeze them out and then put fresh petals into that. So all we need for this is a bowl with a bit of cloth over the top. I've got cheesecloth, yours could be the back of an old t-shirt, doesn't really matter which. Tip in your roses, and you probably will get sticky doing this, and we'll be able to squeeze them out. Don't be afraid to give it a really, really good squeeze. Now at this point, first time round, your oil will probably still smell more of oil than it does on roses, but that's fine. This same oil is going to go back in the jar with fresh roses. And you're going to do this several times. You might want to do it four or five times until you've got a, a really, really rosy perfumed oil. I'm just going to put this down and wipe my fingers. So let's assume this has had several changes of roses and actually it is smelling quite nice already. I think another change or two on this one would be perfect. Now you've got quite a lot of moisture from the roses in there and long term that's going to make them spoil. But again, the Romans have got an answer to this. And what the Romans do to preserve their herb scented oils is they add salt. So this is sea salt, but table salt will work just as well. And you're just going to sprinkle a couple of spoonfuls into your oil, and then that can be jarred up, salt and all. What on earth are we going to do with this though? Well, you could use it as a perfume, but most of us aren't used to oily perfumes today. But we can use it in a way that the Romans love to use oil, and that's in bathing. We find lots and lots of perfume flasks at Roman sites. At the site of the Castleford Bathhouse, archaeologists found many fragments of cosmetic bottles similar to these from the displays of Castleford Museum. 
The Legentian bathhouse was originally built as an annex to the fort for the garrison to use, but local civilians also continued to visit it for 200 years after the fort was decommissioned. The baths were a place for relaxation and socialising, as well as health and hygiene. Some of them are for table perfumes, so the sort of thing you put on your dressing table. Some of them are bathing flasks. So I'm going to pour my oil into my bathing flask. So this gives me a bottle of oil and some really lovely salty mixture here. This salty mixture makes a fantastic skin scrub. Hop into the bath, rub that all over things like your legs, rinse off, gorgeous. The oil in my bottle though, we're going to use that the way the Romans did. Now the Romans bathed by pouring out some oil, rubbing it into their skin and allowing the oil to absorb any dirt and impurities. Now once you've got that oil onto your skin, of course you need to get it off again. And the Romans have got a special tool for this. It's called a strigil. Now a strigil is a curved blade. It's quite blunt, although it has got a fine enough edge to get things off. If you haven't got a strigil at home, go and get the biggest, bluntest metal spoon you've got in the kitchen. That will work just as well. And then all you need to do is scrape off all that dirty oil. It does help to have a cloth to hand to get the dirty oil afterwards. Now the Romans are so used to using strigils to remove dirt and sweat and oils that actually if you're a famous gladiator, your strigil scrapings could be jarred up and sold as souvenirs. How odd is that? So there we are. You're going to make yourself a beautiful jar of a rose scented bathing oil, very much inspired by, but simplified in the way the Romans did it, that you can use either as a lovely, luxurious spa scrub, we call it with a bit of a treat at the moment, or you can try bathing the way the Romans did. Have a lot of fun in the garden this summer.